Keeping venomous reptiles is an unforgiving hobby, requiring proper training and lots of experience. One simple mistake can be the difference between life and death. death, death. Remember, the most venomous snake in the world oh, is the whoa. one that just bit you. There are no venomous snakes with training wheels. Just because you see Viper Keeper handle snakes a certain way does not mean you should try it too. Mr. Pyrus has been really enjoying his uh, new digs, I think. Um, I have a morsel for him. Uh, actually, I give him sort, since I haven't been traveling very much for work, I've been giving him sort of midweek rations. See, I, I really try not to get him to strike because then he usually gets it crossways or and he forgets it. It's just better if if he takes it just very nicely off the tongs like uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Lupogaster did because if he slams it he's liable to to forget about it and not eat it and I find it lying in the substrate uh, uh, later on uh, uh, that day. Normally, uh, you know, he's a lot of times on weekends he'll sit and he'll coil up right here in the front where, where it's easy to feed him. But uh, Is that not hot enough for you, huh? Come on. You know, I buy in bulk and I keep everything in the freezer and stuff, and sometimes uh, I think they stay in the freezer a little too long and uh, they're, they don't quite taste as good as they would like. I think I'll take it, though. There we go. Sully, what you're saying is we have a lot of finicky little eaters Oh, oh here. boy, especially the males. Uh, males are very finicky eaters. The females generally uh, will eat things pretty readily. Did you get yours? You did. All right, so I'm not worried about Mr. K. Um, since he's the last guy that I can give something to with the short tongs, I'm going to dirty the short tongs and uh, collect this and toss it out. That is last week's uh, food. And we'll just let him eat and we'll uh, give him a little bit of uh, water because he might want to drink afterwards. But I think he's been doing quite well in this habitat. Um, uh, I know this is forbidden in the snake world, but he's got a heat rock under there. Uh, so I see him disappear into the log after he eats usually. Uh, so he can sit on that not nice hot spot and digest his food without getting burned to death like some stupid ball pythons do. <laughs> um, you know, I feel bad for the snakes, but... Um, you know, it's... If you're not smart enough to move when you're being burned, yeah, it's kind of hard to be sympathetic. Yep. All right, uh, here we are over across the way, and we'll check in our, on our friendly neighborhood bush viper in a little bit, and we can see our little speckled rattlesnake male, who's quite excited about feeding. All right, relax, dude. When you get too excited, you don't get it oriented the right way and then spit it out and then I have to come back a little later and give it to you. So just relax, slow and steady. There you go, bud. That's the right way. You know, I, the story behind this guy, I've told it a bunch of times, but um, he was the runt of the litter. Uh, just couldn't get together. I risked my my fingers uh, 
and a very expensive hospital bill by uh, force feeding him for the longest time. Uh, finally he started feeding and he's like four years old. He's a rather, you know, I, I don't know if the males, southwestern speckled rattlesnakes, Crotalus pyrus, uh, are all this size, but you know, he's a bit of a runt because uh, uh, of his poor nutritional habits. Uh, you know, I can feed him and uh, if I don't watch him feed, he'll just sort of spit it out and forget what he's doing. Not that he's not hungry or interested in feeding, it's just that he forgets what he's doing. <laughs> um, and also, just the other week I said, well, you know, look, let's, let's try and give him a second one. And, uh, and actually, he regurged uh, the meal. So, uh, you know, he gets one a week and, you know, if, if I, you know, had the time, I could maybe feed him today, Saturday. I could probably feed him on Tuesday again and give him twice a week. Uh, and probably get away with it, but I'm not always, you know, available or, or you know, uh, able to do that. So, um, southwestern speckled rattlesnake found in the southwest corner of uh, Arizona in the very eastern uh, part of, uh, of California, the Yuma area, Arizona area, and whatever cities that lie across the border in California. Um, I know from, uh, uh, as a fact, uh, I have a friend at Loma Linda that was studying the venom and one of his lab mates got nipped by one of these uh, and uh, uh, he told me that uh, Crofab was not very effective in treating the bite, but fortunately uh, Anavip is is available to treat rattlesnake bites. It's FDA approved um, and it would perhaps be a little bit more effective uh, in treating the bite. I don't know this for certain but it would be my first choice uh, uh, if you know uh, an accident does happen. Um, uh, Anavips uh, is a Mexican uh, uh, anti-snake venom that uses several different rattlesnake venoms, but it also uses uh, Bothrop's Atrox, uh, the Tirsi Capello's venom, in, in the formulation. Um, and that's the component that I think gives it its ability to cross-react with some of the hemorrhagic components in rattlesnake venoms that are found here in the U.S. Um, I have no hard data to prove that, but um, there is a paper by Dr. Sanchez out of the Natural Toxin Resource Center that actually compares um, uh, Crofab and Anavip uh, um, and in You know, it doesn't replace Crofab, and Crofab doesn't replace Anavip. Uh, they all have their uh, their strengths and their weaknesses and stuff. So it looks like he's uh, he's doing okay. So I'm going to shut this because Mr. Kazakinovi is just going ape up above me. So I'm going to uh, give Mr. Kazakinovi a treat. Uh, um, he would prefer to eat uh, everything that I got in my bag there, but uh, he only gets one a week. Hello, dude. There you go. Now, unfortunately, Mr. Kazakinovi is losing a lot of his orange coloration. Uh, he was a lot more orange when he was a young youngster and is uh, losing that, unfortunately. Uh, but he's still a very personable, crazy little guy. Um, you know, he's from uh, Eastern Europe. Uh, uh, you know, mountain meadows, the typical vipera. Uh, there's a 
whole plethora of Vipera, different little subspecies and stuff. All very cool little snakes. Uh, uh, they don't get very big, uh, but they don't have to get very big. They fill a niche in, in Mother Nature's plan, and uh, uh, he's quite, uh, quite a little chow hound. So we're going to let him uh, do his thing. And we're going to pause here for a second because I'm going to go check in on my, uh, my guy across the way there, the variable bush viper.